Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Go oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endure forever. Thank God for his grace and his mercy on today. We're going to get into the word of God. We bring greetings from Praise Temple. Amen. And we're in the word of God on this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our Sunday school session. And we are today continuing our looking and our teaching out of the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. And today we're going to be talking about Christ, our only foundation. Our lesson today deals with a very fundamental doctrinal truth of the church. Amen. That the church, praise God, has to be built. Amen. Upon Jesus Christ. Amen. So we thank God that we're going to get a chance to take a look at that. Out of the word of God today. Amen. Please feel free to share us. Amen. With somebody. I'm sharing myself. And uh, we do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Same job, just a different method. Praise God. So this morning, Paul is, is now continuing to deal with his church at Corinth. Uh, he was dealing with divisions in the church earlier. And now he's dealing, praise God, with something that should unify us as the body of Christ, which is the foundation of Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and get into our scriptures today. We're going to read verses. Amen. Uh, first Corinthians three, verse 10 and 11. And we're going to talk about those very quickly. Amen. Amen. So let's read. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth, buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? So here Paul is letting the church know uh, that it is by the power, amen, of God through his grace. Because um, this is how God empowers us as people of God. God empowers us as people of God through his grace. Amen. And we praise God, acknowledge his grace by faith. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say that again. This is how we receive the power of God. God has the grace of God or he puts the power of God in our lives. But we acknowledge that and able to access it by faith. So we have to have faith, church. A, first of all, and we have to live in faith, walk in faith, be people of faith. Amen. So he's saying here that it, that God has given us the grace. Amen. And now Paul has a specific purpose for the grace. And I want you to know that God has grace for each and every one of us for specific purposes in our lives in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So Paul here was saying that as a what? A wise master builder. Amen. Praise God. And a wise master builder is one that knows who has been able to know exactly what they need to do in order to build something that is solid and is sound and something that can stand the test of time. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And he says here, I have laid the foundation and what? Another built upon. Paul here establishes the church. He builds it. He's, he's working on the church. And one thing about the foundation is that the foundation is something that is the most important part of the building. Yeah. If the foundation is not sure, the whole building is going to come down. Yeah. Amen. And uh, 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 but what happens with the foundation is that a lot of times the foundation is covered up and we don't see it every day. Yeah. Praise God. But we have but we have to know that it's there because just like we're standing in this building today, if the foundation was no good. We would have to get out of this place yeah. because the rest of the building is going to come down. So here what he's really speaking of is that. When I lay a foundation in Christ and when the waves of life begin to blow in my life, amen, things begin to go. If my foundation is sure, I'll be able to stand the test of time. Amen. And the waves that come, amen, through my life. Jesus, uh, what Jesus did was when he had those disciples for those three years, he laid a foundation. So that when uh, he moved on off the scene and. Uh, the power of God came on the day of Pentecost. What did what did the apostles do? They 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 continued to what to work on the same foundation, Amen. And they had much success in Christ, Amen. And He wants us to know that uh, He says, "Look, He says, look, He says." So I laid a foundation, but look, 
another who does what? Build upon it. And that's what we do. We build upon a foundation of what Paul has laid. We use the Bible, the written word that Paul wrote as our foundation. And then we build upon that foundation, praise God, to continue to encourage, build up, strengthen, amen, and, and convert men, and then also encourage the body of Christ. Amen? Any questions, comments there about that first uh, passage of scripture? So we have to be sure that we're building on, on the right foundation, church. And the foundation is Christ. He's our only foundation. He says, for, for, for another foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ becomes the foundation and the establishment for the church. Amen. As we know it. Praise God. Now, Jesus builds upon a foundation. He builds upon the, 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 um, uh, the foundation of the law and the prophets. When he comes, he says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to complete and fulfill the law. Amen. So 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 Moses and the prophets built a sub foundation. Amen. Uh, of, of the understanding of what the Bible says that. What did Jesus come to do? He come to what? To free us from what? The law of sin and death, right? But the Bible tells us, amen, if there is no acknowledgement of the law, then there's no acknowledgement of sin. Praise God. Amen. And if there's no acknowledging of sin, then there's no acknowledging that I need a savior. And then Jesus comes to establish salvation in the life of the people of God. Can we say amen? amen. Yes, sir. Praise him. So I wanted to talk about the foundation. You know, the foundation also comes from, so if we equate it to today, our belief system is built on the foundation. And so there are many out there that believe what they believe and may not have been taught the holiness way. So how do we uh, uh, talk about that or have a conversation with someone that may not have been uh, uh, put on a solid foundation? All right. Well, what happens is, is that, and one of the hardest things to do when you build a building is to break up the foundation and relay it. Can somebody say amen? It's amen. true. Praise God. It's hard to take a whole building down and lay a foundation, but it is possible through Christ. So that's where we need a revelation of God in our life. We have to share with people, amen, uh, the scriptures. You know, Jesus said something very profound when he was dealing with Peter. Uh, he said, who do men say that I am, the son of man am? Remember he asked that question? And some, and guess what? They had all kinds of foundations they talked about, didn't they? Some say thou are what? The, uh, John the Baptist. <laughs> some say thou are what? Elias, if we build a church on John the Baptist, or if we build a church upon the, the principles of Elijah, our foundation is not going to be a sure foundation. Amen. Because though John did great works, Jesus called John the greatest of all prophets. But guess what? What was, what was John lacking? John was only teaching us to what? Repent, which is necessary, right? He wasn't teaching us, praise God, about being saved. He just told him, Tell God you're sorry, and guess what? Tell God you're sorry, and tell God you're sorry. All right, so what I'm supposed to do after that? Lacking. What's the prophet? What was the establishment of, of the prophet of Elijah? Elijah was one that what? Worked miracles, saw the giftings of God, saw the power of God, but, Ele but yet Elijah could not save me. Right. Amen. Praise God. And you'd be surprised. There are there are ministries built upon principles of John John's teaching, but and there's principles built upon. You, you can go to church right now, and they don't talk about Jesus. All they talk about is the works of the Spirit and the moves of God and the power of God, and may never tell you about that you in your sin and you need to be saved. But when we deal with Jesus Christ, we got to deal with His death, His burial, His resurrection, His virgin birth. And then his 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 what his his ascension unto heaven, and that he's promised to do what return unto us, amen. So so we have to amen. Really, what happens is that we have to fill in the missing pieces in people's lives, and hopefully, amen. Uh, when uh, when Jesus said, "Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man?" Am and he says, "Well, who do you say I am, Peter?" He says, "Thou art who the Christ, the Son of the Living God." So we have to pray that God's revelation will come into somebody's life. And guess what? I'm gonna share something with you. There ain't nothing to argue about either. You ain't got to fuss at them. You ain't got to be mad. Well, guess what? You ain't, you know, and guess what? You ain't got to put them in hell either. Uh-oh, praise God. Amen. Guess what? You have to let the revelation of God show in their hearts and their lives. 
Amen. And guess what, church? That's trusting in God. That God, who's, can you save anybody? Can't save nobody, can I? No matter how many, how much I try, I can't save nobody. Jesus has to save. So we have to present to them Jesus and him crucified. And hopefully that he'll fill in those missing pieces in the foundation so they can be able to stand on a sure foundation. Amen. Amen. Because guess what, church? We can all find something wrong with everything. But guess what? We got to learn how to find the good in the bad and encourage people through that. That's what Jesus taught. Jesus taught how to find what? The good in the midst of the bad. The, the, Roman, the, Ro the Roman soldier come to Jesus, tell them his daughter is sick. Rome, that Roman wasn't living nothing for God. He built them a tax. Remember he said, this man is worthy, Lord, of you touching and dealing with him because he built us a, a, a synagogue. Jesus really said that, that don't make you worthy. But anyway, we're going to talk about that. Your, your, your works ain't going to save you. Hallelujah. But the man came to Jesus. He said, Lord, you know, help my daughter because she's, she's deadly sick. And Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. And what, what did the man say? Just what? Just send the word, Lord. Yeah, he sent the word. And God did what? God touched that man's daughter, did he not? That man may have had blood on his hand. Because he's a Roman soldier. But yet God saw what? The good in the midst of what? The bad. And I challenge you today. Can you still see the good in the midst of the bad of the people you deal with? Amen. There's good in everybody. I'm gonna, I don't have to go back to the Star Wars analogy where, where Luke asked uh, Darth Vader. I know there's some good in you somewhere, Dad. <laughs> Praise him. Amen. And guess what? We gotta learn how to we gotta learn how to tap into that and, and be and be people of what edification and not people, amen, of of destroying people's hearts and minds and spirits, amen. Because we're trying to help them be saved. But guess what? We ain't showing no love. Church love is the under is the under underlying current that we have to walk in. Amen. Any other questions, comments about there? So we have to give them the word of God. And hopefully that they're filling those missing pieces. All right. He says here uh, in verse number um, uh, 12, he says, let's read verse 12. Amen. Everybody have it. Amen. He says, now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, verse 13, every man's work shall be made. What? Manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So here now, Paul's let us know, amen, that when we are working on the things of God, amen, there is a, watch this. Now, some people don't believe this, but Paul clarifies right here in the word of God, that there is a quality of work you can give for God. Amen. There's a quality. And God is telling us right now, though we are saved, guess what? We got to, amen, work at a high quality of God. When we start talking about things that are gold, silver, and precious stones, those are things of what? High quality. Amen? As a matter of fact, these are things of what? Purity. Gold, praise God, is what we call in this world, in the chemistry world, it is an element. Amen? And it's at, and at, its, it's at its most purest state is gold and silver. And precious stones, praise the Lord, are things that have been tried under the pressures of the earth's crust and been pressed into something that is precious through trial and through pressure or heat. Praise God. Amen. Something has been applied to it to change it into something pure and precious. And here he's saying that if we have now what? Wood, stubble, and hay. Praise the Lord. These things, praise God, when they get under pressure, what do they do? They compress and they burn and they lose. Watch this their quality of their pureness of their state. Why? Because everybody's going to have to be tried at some point by fire. The Bible says that the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith is more precious than gold. Amen. Amen? So we have to understand church that, uh, and I've been telling the church over and over again, I want to share with the church again today is that we got to learn how, amen, to go through our situation and stop asking God to get us out of that situation. Because God is working, amen, a transformation in our lives. 
praise him. And we got to go through the process. Mama put that cake in the oven. I don't care, praise the Lord, how good that cake was, but that cake don't go through that heat. And you don't let that cake stand there long enough or you're going to pull out a big old mess. <laughs> Somebody say amen. But if you let it stay in there, guess what? It's going to fully develop to where it should be. So that set so that some watch this so that somebody can profit from that situation. Praise God. Amen. So 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 Paul's letting us know that that these things we have to know, make sure that we're we are are doing our best, our highest quality, amen. When we uh, uh come to the house of God or when we're serving in ministry, amen. We got to know, praise God, that we got to do it to the best of the ability of the grace that God has given us. Amen. Praise God. When we get up here and preach, watch this. Watch this. Whether there's one in the audience or a thousand, you don't change the way you preach. <laughs> if you are an usher, whether a hundred people come to the door or two come to the door, you still usher what? The same way. Amen. You get up and sing on the praise team, praise God, whether there's two in the congregation or two thousand, guess what? You still giving God the glory. And what happens is the devil likes to trick us. In the thinking numbers matter with God. Let me tell you something. Numbers only matter with God when it when it relates to us. Because God don't, God God says from everlasting to everlasting, thou art who? Thou art God. So God is all, always working from a sense of unlimitedness. But yet he sent one son. And then one son was the fullness of God. So, 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 so we have to understand, church, that we have to make sure that I want to put up treasures that are precious before God. Yeah. I want to make sure that uh, I want to give God my best. And watch this. You give God your best when you operate in faith. Okay. Hey, Pastor, I ain't preached before. I ain't taught before. I ain't done this before. I say, you got some faith? Yeah, you got some faith. Get on up there and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You're digging, digging as best you can by what? By faith. Sing by faith. Preach by faith. Work in the kitchen by faith. Drive the band by faith. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. When I first got in church, I learned how to drive by driving the church van. We, I remember, I don't forget. I just got in the church and I was the only one that had a valid license. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Praise God. And we had to go to a trip to Chicago. And I was taking that 15 passenger. Through Chicago, he thought you had some army crews. I look, I look, I, I, I learned how to drive that day. I learned how to take that van and go across three lanes. Somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but guess what? I did it by what? By faith, trusting in what the Lord. And guess what? After I got done, I got stuck driving the van for a while. They said, "Brown can drive a van, y'all." They didn't know I was just starting out. <laughs> so, 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 watch this. All of us have points in our life where we start in something. It is us that has a start and an end. So, 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 don't think, praise God, Amen. That that, that, that where you start is where you're going to end at. But guess what? Watch this. If there is no start, there won't be no end. And what happens is that again, the devil tricks us from even what starting. Amen. Praise God. Every man runs the race, doesn't he? But guess what? You got to at least what? Start the race to be able to have a chance to even to finish it. And what happens is that the fear tries to paralyze people from even starting in ministry. And again, guess what? Because I don't know, Lord. But guess what? You got to learn how to say, Lord, I'm going to trust in the Lord and what? Lean not to my what? My own, own understanding and all my ways through what? Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I need some help. I'll tell you one of the best prayers I ever prayed, Lord. Lord, help me right now. <laughs> Help me right now so that so that I can be able to give God gold, silver and precious stone and not what wood, hay and stubble. That when my stuff is tried, when they start fighting in the kitchen, <laughs> you don't become a casualty of that of what's going on. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Uh, with, 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 with your program uh, is just cut and you got to go do something else. Praise God, because it's for the betterment of the overall ministry. Because guess what? Sooner or later, amen, it says in verse 13, every man's work shall be what? Made manifest. You're going to find out who's going to stick and stay. 
and you're gonna find out who's gonna go. You're gonna find out who was a son and who was a hireling. Crazy. All you gotta do is just that's why that's why when people come into church, all you gotta do is just wait. Amen. Just wait. Just love them, just care for them, and sooner or later they're gonna show their own hand. Yes, because sooner or later something's gonna happen. They're like, well, you know, I don't know, I can do that. Praise God. But if you love God and love the people of God and know that God is placed in a certain place for your growth and your development, because uh, he said, you shall be like a tree. What? Uh, uh, Y'all missed it. You shall be like a tree. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. You shall be like a tree rooted and planted. We got too many walking trees in the kingdom of God. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone. To me, walking trees in the kingdom of God, trying to move from one stream to another. Praise him. But, 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 and that's why, church, you need God. I said, I said, you need God to plant you somewhere. Amen. And know that, guess what? And know that sooner or later, uh, 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 the creek going to rise. <laughs> Praise him. Ding boom, know what I'm talking about. Sooner or later, the creek going to rise. <laughs> And gonna see just how what planted and rooted you are, and when the creek goes back down, you're gonna realize that God had planted you there, and you're gonna prosper, and your leaf is not gonna wither. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Any questions, comments from anybody? Nobody got y'all ain't got nothing to say. I'm gonna start pulling a deep good on y'all. Start calling you out. <laughs> no, we gotta go ahead. He says, look. He says because it shall be what revealed by what by fire by the pressure. Amen. And the fire shall try what every man's work or what sort it is. So Paul's let us know, amen, either you're going to be in here and make it happen or guess what? You're going to you're going to uh, uh, fly by the wayside. Remember Jesus talked about the sower sold the word and the word was what planted what in good ground. But then some what was was what, what land among thorns. Amen. And then some uh, was most weeds and shot up. But with but sooner or later, the care of the life came and what choked it out. Amen. And we got to make sure that we get that word in our heart as David did. He says, look, he says, so so our works are going to be tried, church. And again, this is this is the next principle after salvation. So watch this. First thing is I need to I need to make a commitment to God Amen. by faith. Amen. All right. I'm, I'm, so and then once I make a commitment, to God, guess what? God's going to cause me to repent. God's going to cause me to go down in that water. Amen. God's going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. Praise him. Now, after I get filled with the Holy Ghost, now I got a work to do because now I'm in the body of Christ. And now that I'm in the body of Christ. Now I got to go on to perfection. Amen. In the body of Christ, because the, the scripture says iron sharpeneth iron. Some people are going to rub up against you. For the purpose to what? To sharpen you. Praise him. Some spark. Oh, Jesus. Dick, some sparks are going to fly. Wow. <laughs> Praise him, but all the all, only thing that's happening, God is what making it into a weapon, a war for the kingdom of God. He says, "Look, every man's work, and, and see what kind of sword it is. If any man's work abide which he buildeth thereon, he shall receive what a reward." Y'all see that? So now, as I'm working and pressing through the things of the kingdom of God, Amen. I am going to receive a reward. I want to make this one statement. You know, the the lesson says there's no such thing as a super Christian. Amen. I like what it said there. Guess what? We are co-laborers with God and co-laborers with what? One another. Amen. And we got to learn how, amen, to, 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 to let, to help everyone operate in their necessary area. Amen. He said, I've given some, some, some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists. Amen. What? For the edification of the saints, for the work of the what? The ministry. Praise God. Amen. My bishop used to call them Bible jobs. Those are Bible jobs. You know what else is a Bible job? Deacon is a Bible job. That's a Bible job. I said, that's a Bible job. Praise him. And evangelist, that's a Bible job. And when God starts placing jobs in, in the word of God, guess what? We have to operate in the power that God, by the grace God has given us. You know, Peter got up. Now, if I was not mistaken, when Peter spoke that first great message of the church, that was Peter's initial sermon. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Well. 
and Peter preached so that how many people came to God? 3,000 souls got saved at Peter's initial sermon. Oh, Lord. If we, man. <laughs> Peter got up and said, these men ain't drunk as ye suppose. You don't think Peter was just operating on his own power? He was operating by faith in the power of God. And church, I'm of, I'm of the persuasion that we'll be surprised, we'll surprise our own selves when we live and operate in faith in God. Amen. Praise God. He says here, amen, in verse number 15, if any man's work shall be burned, guess what? He shall what? Suffer loss. But he himself shall be what? Shall be saved. Yet so as by what? Fire. So he let us know here that we know that uh, uh, this foundation of God is eternal. He's not just talking about the final judgment. He's talking about our works here on earth are going to be tried, church. You're going to see how much stick and stay power you got. Not just at, at your local ministry, but before, before, before having faith with God. Amen. When we walk out these doors and go back to our several lives, guess what? That's where that's where the real real trials show up. It's here when we come to the house of God, we're so supposed to be strengthened here. And then so that we can go out and be a witness, be strong in the Lord and the power of might when we're outside of the house of God. Amen. That's why when you come to the house of God, you need to get everything you can. Because you don't know what the devil got waiting for you out there. Because he, 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 he has been sent to what? To steal, kill, and destroy. Praise God. And you're going to try to see what you got going on. Yes, D, I see your hand. Uh, yeah. Something on the fact that you know, <coughs> God is the foundation. And, and once we come to church, we're saved. We're building all his foundation. And, and he's looking for the quality mm -hmm. in us. And in our process of, of being saved and going through the steps of, of progressing, we have a tendency to, to build our foundation all, all shady material that, that, that don't really fit. Right. And and, and it's going to be faulty. It, it, it's going to be burned. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be challenged. And, and it, it, we'll lose. But until we get to the point that we use good quality word and, and tactics and, and, and things like that to, to build a stronger foundation, we can you know, sustain some of the wives of the devil in right. your own in faith to build an our foundation to where God wants to be. Amen. And he'll, he'll, he'll carry us through that. But Amen. we have to be patient. Amen. He will carry us through that. Any other questions, comments from anybody? It's a good time to talk. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. He was saying, I was uh, commenting on that, you know, he was saying that, you know, with precious uh, silver, gold, and stone, and he was letting us know that the foundation it's built, like you said, it has to be built solid or it's going to crumble, but it's showing us that either we're going to be that precious stone or we're going to be that hay, uh, that, that uh, rubble that will crumble away. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, some people are going to do a halfway job. Some people are going to do a good job. And that's what he's looking for. Like me, like if I just say that's good enough for the Lord, that's not going to get it. Right. It's not good enough. And so that's what he's comparing them. He's either going to be precious or you gonna be something that can run from Amen. Amen. And what oh, yeah, go ahead. I see your hand in the back there. Yes, sir. I like this Right. Amen. That is true. Because remember, this is about your rewards. Now look, it's there's two things happening, or three things happening in heaven. You gotta get judged, right? Yeah. Praise God. You gotta make it there. That's two, right? And then after you get there, guess what? You're going to receive a reward. Amen. All right. I look, I want to walk around with at least one star in my crown. <laughs> you should want at least one star in your crown. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible talks about that. We're going to receive a reward. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to be able to, to walk in the rewards that God has for me. But the greatest thing is, is that, amen, that God has saved me from the wrath to come. Amen. Praise him that I made it. Now, if I don't have a star on my crown. Guess what? That's all right. Amen. You made it. But guess what? If you make it, uh, 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 that's why that's why that's why uh, our theme this year is progressing the things of the spirit. We ought to be tired. And upset about just staying at the status quo in God. I want more of God. I want to see the more manifestations of God. I want to I want to see him in his glory. See, Moses wasn't satisfied, though he went up the mountain. 
Moses said, Lord, I want to see your face. <laughs> and God said, Moses, you asking too much. <laughs> but guess what? I'm going to give you a consolation prize. What's the old, what's the old statement? Uh, shoot for the stars and you might land at the moon. Amen. How much how much of God are you trying to get? And how 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 much quality of work that you want to give to God so that so that you can receive a reward. So this deals with my motivation for salvation. This helps us motivate us to stay in the house of God. Yeah, amen. amen. And he wants to continue to push us in the things of the spirit because, you know, even uh, Elisha said, Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want? He said, when you leave, I want to receive what? A double portion. That's what he said. And what did, what did Elijah say? Elijah said, that's a hard thing. Did he say that? But guess what? He said, but if you see me when I'm taken up, God's going to grant you your petition. Why are you limiting what you're asking of God? Amen. I'm going to say that again. Oh, Jesus. Why are you living with you asking God? Lord, all I want is a small business. You know what? I want me a big business. <laughs> somebody, see, somebody can't go. With, <laughs> Lord, we want, we should, have, we are, our, 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 our desires and petitions ought to be made to God so that God can come in and help us see great things in our lives. Amen. Amen. He says here, praise God, in verse number um, 16, he kind of changes gears here, and but 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 we have to understand that the foundation is God. Amen. We're going to be tried, and guess what? And when we're tried and we come out, we're going to receive a reward. Amen? As long as we build upon what? Jesus as what? Our foundation. All right? Verse 16, he says what? Know ye not that, that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man what? defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now, y'all see that God, that Paul is not writing here in singular. He's right here, what, in plural. So a lot of times people, though we are the temple of God as individuals, Amen. what Paul is here is talking about the church as a whole. Amen. Because he says here, know ye not that ye, ye are. Ye are is plural, not me as. Ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth where in you. If any man devile the temple, shall God destroy it for, for the temple of God is holy, which ye are. So we here he's talking about the holiness of God collectively as a temple of God. Church, we have to defend the house of God that nobody tries to come in and, and defile the temple. Amen. And 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 also. Uh, though we are individual temples of God, we got to make sure that we keep our, we got to possess our best of what? In sanctification and holiness. That's what the Bible says. I see your hand back there. But he says here, he's talking about those who come against the church as a whole. All right. Somebody try to come to the church as a whole. God's going to defend who? His church. Upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not what? Prevail against it. That's why church, the best place to be is in the house of God. Because when you're in the house of God and a part of the house of God, there's an extra layer of protection that's over your life instead of you running out being an independent, laying hands on the HDTV saint. Amen. Even though if that's what you're doing, get a part, you become a part of a local ministry. So Paul right here tells us that there's an extra hedge of what? Protection over you. Praise him. It's dangerous walking out there by yourself. Because who's going to have your bite? Who's going to have your back when the enemy comes in like a flood? Yeah, I know God will, but guess what? The Bible says two are better than one. Amen. Yes, sir. I saw you hitting back there. Yes, sir. No, he's talking about us as a collective group. Us as a collective church dome group here. It's not the temple, not in this passage of scripture. He's talking about the church as a whole. So what was happening was, Let's say Paul had this. These churches were established in in very uh, 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 localized areas. All right. Amen. There weren't other a lot of churches around Amen. and people would try to come in and what? Destroy the church. And Paul was letting them know if anybody tried to do that, God's going to do what? God's going to take care of. It. Try to defile the temple. Amen. 
And guess what? It's not always those who are coming from the outside in trying to file a temple. Sometimes people try to come in as a secret agent. <laughs> they try to destroy it from what? The inside out. Praise I've seen it. I said I've seen it. Uh -uh. I've seen it, praise God. Where, where, where they, 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 they look like a sheep. But they are, they, they, they are big bad wolves. <laughs> and guess what? Paul's telling us that, but sooner or later, guess what? They're going to show what they are. And when they show what they are, God said, guess what? I'm going to deal with it. That's why you ain't got to worry, praise God. God's going to deal with them. I've seen God chase people out the church who, who meant the church no good. I didn't believe it. Remember one day, lady, meant the church no good? This is a long time ago. She tried to come to the pulpit. It looked like a like, like an angel did a suplex. She it's like she came off her feet and was slammed right at the altar. And the first thing she said, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. I was like, I don't know what you're forgiving God for. He must have had very bad intentions. Ain't seen a sin. I've seen it. So, so our job is to continue to love God, love people, but let God, he said, let the wheat and the tear do what? Grow together. We have to understand, church, everybody in the house of God ain't, ain't here for the right reason. But that doesn't mean we lock them out the church. Right. What it does is that you, you know, Paul, uh, 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 Jesus knew who Judas was, but yet Judas held a money bag, didn't he? Yeah. He knew who Judas was from the beginning. But and then he had the nerve, watch this, Jesus. Love Jesus, Jesus so that he that, 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 that he said well, he, he he dipped the cup with him and sucked with him. Amen. See, we miss that. Sometimes we, we 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 see that as an accusation. Guess what? You can't eat with nobody you ain't got no way, you ain't you ain't comfortable with. Amen. But yet Jesus was comfortable with them, even though he knew who he was. Yeah. Jesus. Uh oh. That, that's 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 tough, isn't it? Man, this dude on, but guess what? But guess what? Who dealt with Judas? God dealt with Judas, did he not? Praise God. Amen. He said, oh, my time is up. My time is up. I'm trying to stay in my time, Deacon. Hey, hey. I got, give me three minutes. He says here, uh, 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 the file is temple. So remember, this is about talking about the church as what? A collective group, a body of Christ, that God will protect us. He says, let no man deceive you, verse 18. Let's talk about the, the strength of wisdom. Let no man deceive Let's read verse 18. Everybody have it? Amen. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may become wise. So what is happening is that we have wisdom that we gain in this world. But guess what? When we compare the wisdom we gain with this world, guess what? When we compare it to the wisdom of God, it is what? Foolishness. Amen. And what happens is too many times if people are not, watch this, if people are not converted, because there's people that come into the church who know what, who are religious, but they haven't been converted. And they try to bring all that stuff from the world into the church. Praise him. And they think that their wisdom is more important. They think, they think that the bottom line in the church is more important than ministry. Right. You better watch out. Praise him. Pastor, you know, you know, you know uh, we, 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 uh, we just ain't got the funds to that. Well, 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 where is your faith? God. Bishop say we need to go out and we need to move here and, and build here because there's a community that needs us. Well, you know, Pastor, we ain't got that because this is what the Bible. Where is your fact? Why are we not giving the opportunity for God to move in our lives? Praise Him. You know, uh, we have to understand, church, that, that we have to press towards what? We have to press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling God. What do we have to press through? Us? <laughs> Go ahead, Dick. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to me that what we see now in a church, the church is beginning to start look like the world. Yeah. And look, I ain't knocking nobody. But can I say it? Say it, Pastor. Say, say it, Pastor. We ain't dimming the lights. <laughs> 
and getting a smoke machine for the anointing to come across the stage. <laughs> praise the Lord. We ain't dealing with light. Praise God. Amen. I believe the church got to be full of light. <laughs> we may be in a traditional setting. There's nothing wrong with, 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 with updating our setting. I plan on updating our setting very soon. We plan on updating it. Guess what? But guess what? There's certain elements of the of 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 of, of the world that 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 of the church has picked up. It's just it's just a little too close. It's just it's just a little too close. To 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 yeah. It's, this is this is the pulpit. This is the altar. This ain't the stage. Because the stage means you're going to what? Perform. This is where, see, that's why we need to sing that song, Is Your All on the Altar of Sacrifice Lay. You know, we, we haven't sung that in a while, but we need to go back and sing that song to realize that this ain't this ain't no place to play with. Praise him. If you want to figure out how we play with it, just go back and ask Aaron's son. They played with the altar. They, they played with the altar. All for God, as the preacher said yesterday, strange fire. Amen. Praise him. Amen. We got to be careful, church. We got to and see what happens that we lose the respect for God. We, we, and guess what? We can't lose the respect for God because if God, watch this, if, if we stop respecting God, God will stop respecting us. Yeah. And he has a tendency to pull his mercy and grace off our lives. That's why he says for the wisdom, verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. He gave it all anyway. That's like that's like uh, 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 you having a child and you gave a child a, 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 a what they call where they make a little money, uh, uh, um, an allowance. And then your child try to come back and want to pay for breakfast. Here, Dad, I'm going to give you $5 for breakfast. I'm going to eat today. Look, boy, I gave you that $5. And guess what? I've already bought breakfast. How are you going to insult me trying to pay for something I already paid for? And I, so, so you see what I'm saying? And that's what people try to do. People try to offer back to God what God gave them. That's why, praise God, God ain't really, God, when we try to offer something back to God that disrespects him, he has to put us in our place. Amen? That's why the psalmist says, what shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits unto me. What does he say? I'll take the cup of salvation and do what? Just call on the name of the Lord. There's nothing I can offer back unto God but myself. And guess what? My praise and my worship is what I need to offer unto him. Amen? Praise God. Uh, he says here, so we, and, and what happens is we try to offer God these things. Works. Lord, did, Lord, did I not, uh, Jesus said, Lord, did I not visit the sick? Did I not feed the hungry? What did Jesus say? I never, you work. I never knew you. You work of iniquity, right? Depart from me. Is that what he says? Praise him. Why? Because you're trying to offer God something He gave you. Praise Him. There's really no value to Him. It's only value. It's only been tricked into value because your wisdom has 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 allocated a certain type of value to something that is not even valuable value to us. Guess what? There's a lot of people today that got a whole lot of money, but got cancer, sickness, mm -hmm. disease. And you know what? If they and I, I, I pray for people like that. And I feel sorry for them. But all their money can't get rid of cancer, can't get rid of sickness and disease. Praise Him. And we have to understand, church. What can I render unto God? I got to render unto God that He's sovereign, and that what He's doing is right. Amen. That's sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow. You know, I lost my mother when I was ten. I said ten. I said 10, y'all. It was a hard pill for me to swallow for a long time. But the Lord had to help me to understand that, that she was suffering. He showed me when I said that she was what? Suffering. And that, and that she was going through. And that he had to do what? Take her. But he was going to take care of us. And I, got, I can testify today that after 40 years, 41 years this year, the Lord is taking care of Amen. That's my testimony. So we have to understand, church, that God is what? Sovereign. And when we start offering, you know, our wisdom, praise God, he's going to call us to be in verse 19 for the wisdom of this world. Is what? It's foolishness with God. For it is written, he that taketh the wise in their what? Their own what? Craftiness. 
Y'all remember uh, who was that in the book of uh, Esther? Uh, was that Haman? Haman was so wise, he he hung on his own gallows. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Lord help us. Yep. Yep. Paul warns us don't be don't think yourself more highly than what you ought to think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. And and again, verse 20, my time is up. Again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, and they are what? They are what? Bang. We are so wise. We're so smart. We are so amen. Praise God. Amen. I, I I think I'm gonna tell on somebody. I'm gonna tell on somebody. But I remember one day I got a had I had a family member. I'm gonna say it's a family member. And and guess what? They bought a brand new car, right? They bought a brand new car. Uh, but uh, this is when those remember the, when the push button cars first came out, right? Because you know that the key connects to the car, so that when you press the button, it'll start, right? Well, he goes out one day to start his car. And a brand new car. He pressed the button. My car broke. He crying. I said, what's wrong with you? S smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Brilliant. Smart guy. My car broke. I said, get in the car. <laughs> I drive over to the CVS. I said, pop that thing open. Put a new battery in there. <laughs> Three dollar battery, thirty thousand dollar car. Amen. Talking about talking about your own wisdom because you're so smart. Amen. <laughs> Took them back over there. I said, "Put the key in your pocket. Sit in the car. Hit the button. <laughs> so smart. Missed it all because you're so smart. Can't tell you nothing." I got him. I went back in the house and laid back down. <laughs> but you got to understand, church, and, that, and, and that's exactly how we do sometimes, don't we? We so smart, we don't know nothing. <laughs> and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of wise that they are what? They are vain. Therefore, that no man glory in men. We can't glory in our wisdom. Paul says, Paul knew eight languages. Paul was a Pharisee of a Pharisee. Paul was the new, but he says, I count all things but loss that I might win Christ. Praise him. And guess what? When people walk in the house of God, you don't know what kind of education they got. But some people want to let throw the education up in your face. Praise him. I heard the brother say yesterday, who is that right there? He is a son of God. <laughs> Child of the most high. That's what he is. And we learn how to walk in that. Thank God for education. Thank God for the God who allowed us to do these things. Amen. Some of us, some of us have been working in crafts and skills for so long. Actually, we we don't have a piece of paper, but we're actually doctors in those areas. So we got the experience. But we wouldn't know that. All we just they say, who is that? They ain't nothing but a praiser. Right. They ain't nothing but a worshiper. Right. Praise him. I think that's a greater testimony when it comes to the things of the kingdom than. Oh, he got this and got that and this piece of paper and that piece of paper. Amen. Praise God. He says there. He said we got a glory in God and not in our own works. For all theirs is ours. For and he says no, that doesn't mean anything. Guess what? We have to understand that everything we have belongs to God. Everything. One of the greatest things you ever do is tell God thank you, Lord, that, that you just see another day. Amen. Because you don't see another day, all the other stuff ain't gonna happen. Amen. Therefore, let no man glory in other things. Whether he says, look, he says also, don't glory in the things of men. He lists some names here, doesn't he? Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, the things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is who? Is God. He's trying to let us know, church, true wisdom comes from God, our salvation, amen, is not dependent upon who, pro who proclaims the gospel to us. Praise the Lord, but that but that we respond to the gospel. Amen. Praise God. And what happens is you'd be surprised how many people will, 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 will gravitate to a particular preacher, to a particular ministry. Praise God. And, and God forbid. Oh, let me back up. Some people gravitate to a certain, certain ministry and then that person ends up having conflict in their life. And guess what? 
because they were looking at the person and not looking at God, their faith is destroyed. Amen. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I stop following Christ, stop following me. Praise him. The day I get up here and start talking about something other than Jesus Christ, if y'all need to tap me on the show, say, Pastor, you need to you need to go ahead and, you know, you might need to do something else. Amen. And you say, Pastor, how is that possible? Because I want to preach the word and teach the word so that you know the difference. Amen. Have you ever been in a, I'm going to close this. Have you ever been in a, in a service where someone's preaching other, something other than Jesus Christ? And you're like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and it twists, it does this to your spirit. Amen. You're like, hold it. Oh, that ain't right. How, how can you do that? Because somebody has taught you the Bible. And you're not doing it as an accusation. You're not doing it being accusatory. You just do it because, because guess what? The, the truth of God's word is shining forth. You say, hey, they're not preaching. They're not, they not preaching the truth of God's word. Guess what? The Bible says nothing new under the sun. You're going to hear a preacher preach faith. You're going to hear a, pe a preacher what? Trust in the Lord. You're going to hear a preacher teach and preach. If they start preaching something new, guess what? You better watch out. Hallelujah. And you better not cry. <laughs> Praise them. Because they're going to they preach these things to encourage you in the things of God. Because guess what? The foundation has been what? The foundation has been set. God bless you. God keep you as a prayer. I'm a little over. I'm going to give it to thee and close it out in Jesus' name.